If you think you're missing something by listening to us rather than some other radio station, well, you probably are. But we'll make up for it. Just send us an email, and we'll send you back 17 minutes of commercials. Everything you want to hear from the voice of Cerritos College, WPMD on the net, where people make a difference. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Falcon Spotlight. I'm your host, Rob J.F., and at this time, I would like my guest to please introduce herself. Hi, I'm Vanessa Acosta. Uh, so tell me about the uh, organizations that you represent this semester. Um, I organize one of the club, which I'm the, by, not my bad, the president of the club, Dynamic Dance Club. And we've been on this campus for about two years already. Two years, and this is my first year as being as president to it. Uh, so tell me, what is Dynamic Dance Club? Uh, Dynamic Dance Club it was a club to uh, it was a club created to teach people how to dance different ways and teach them from different styles. If you're shy, come out. We'll help you get out of your little box and everything. So. And how is it like dealing with the shy people? How, how do you <laughs> how do you start with baby steps? Um, it does take baby steps from there because sometimes they don't want to get out of their comfort zone, but you got to make them feel comfortable like they're at home, it's their family. So it takes time. It's not right away. They have. It takes time, little progress. And we actually had some few people who were shy, and now they're the talkative people in the group. So <laughs> when do you guys usually meet? We usually meet on Mondays, every other Monday, actually. Um, at 3 o'clock on the Student Center stage, or FA54, depending what day. And also, we do workshops on the opposite days of Mondays, so at 3 o'clock. What are the workshops like? What do you do? Uh, the workshops are pretty much um, a different uh, style technique. So for this week, I think we are going to be having a hip-hop workshop. We'll be teaching hip-hop, hip like the basic steps or what uh, to do little moves or little dance styles and everything for the workshop. Just recently we had a bachata workshop. Went pretty well. So you guys cover um, various uh, genres? Yeah, we do. We do from contemporary modern to jazz, from Latin to hip hop, from um, beat, beat boy, that kind of style. And yeah, we cover a lot of different ones. Cool. Now, when it comes to practicing, uh, you guys usually um, do it like with the music, or you guys wait until. What the practice is that we first show them the music of what type of dance is it, and then from there we'll show them the basics without the music, and then we'll incorporate the music little by little so they can feel for the music how the beat goes and how they how the dances run through the song. Cool and. Um, do you guys like perform at events or something? Or? Yeah, we actually have um, an event uh, at the end of the semester, May 5th. That's our showcase. It's going to be our two-year showcase. And every semester, we always perform at the end of the semester to show the different dance styles that everybody learned and took time to practice them. And uh, how much preparation goes into it? Um, um, it takes a lot of preparation, a um, lot of dedicated people. Luckily, we have dedicated choreographers who takes the time out of their own day to teach these couple of people, whoever wants to dance, the pieces that they uh, made, and they'll perform them. No, I noticed you guys have a table out there. Tell me about today's event. Um, actually, today's event is a nacho cell and a popcorn cell. For, to fundraise for the club, we're actually trying to fundraise for two things. One, for the club shirts and sweaters. And another one, at the end of the semester, we're giving back to the club member as a little kickback for them to come and enjoy themselves. So we're actually fundraising for a lot of things for them to appreciate their the dedication and motivation into this club. Because without them, this club wouldn't be on campus. I think last time I, I you guys uh you guys had did a float, right? Yeah, we had did a float. Um what was it on? Uh, I think it was the comic book one, right? Um, yeah, it was um actually that comic book one was the zombies. We did zombies walking dead, but we instead we said the dancing dead. <laughs> 
Well, how does um, how do you guys go with uh, planning like uh, you know doing a float? And I know that it takes a lot of time and effort to build mm-hmm. such creative things. Well, the school. Luckily, the school helped us on that part, giving us a certain amount of money, and we go to Home Depot. We buy the stuff, and we get different club members' ideas and whatever they feel free, their opinions to the whole thing, what they like, what they don't like. And from there, we get the creation and start making the float. That was definitely... I know that um, lots of people are looking forward to that one, especially because... There's such a huge following with that TV show. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys have, like, a lot of club members that watched it? That yeah, one? the TV show? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a very popular show. Everybody likes that show. <laughs> so um, what do we have going on uh, this semester for your club? This semester, we're doing a couple of more. We actually have another bake sale coming up on April 7th, as I believe. And we're actually helping out one of the contestant members for Mr. Cerritos, which is Michael. We, he asked for our help, and we're helping him out with two dancers. And just recently, K-Pop asked us to perform in their first showcase of the semester. And we're probably going to do that, and we have our showcase coming up as well. When is uh, Mr. Cerritos? Mr. Cerritos is actually tomorrow. Well, I think that's Wednesday, right? Mm-hmm. Tomorrow it is then. So <laughs> I know that everybody looks forward, especially to uh, you know the humor and stuff that goes into the uh, <laughs> yeah. performance part. Yes, there's all a lot of humor part into that, but I can't wait for it and everything. Now, um, th- we had also. Um, you know, the Falcon Games, did you guys also have um, a participation in, in that? Yes, the Falcon Games. Oh, very difficult <laughs> in the academic part. <laughs> um, we did the academic. We made it to second round, but, hey, we tried our best. We did the the physical game, and we made it to that one. We didn't make it to second round, unfortunately, but we did do the wild card. And we were almost close, but hey, things happen. And then the video games, we didn't make it either. So nothing, we didn't win anything this semester, but at least we went out there and tried. So Yeah, there's lots of activities <laughs> that uh, people can participate in, and I think that's also what brings out the school spirit. There's mm-hmm. so much stuff that you can do. Um, right now, I'm going to transition to some commercials, and then I'll be right back after these public service announcements. Nothing better demonstrates an artist's ability to perform, to connect with his audience, than his work on stage. At the WPMD Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, we bring you Roadwork. A series of great concerts, start to finish, uninterrupted, from the greatest names in rock and roll. All from the WPMD archives, some haven't aired in years, some have never aired at all. And you have the best seat in the house, right in front of your speakers. Roadwork. Throughout the week, on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, on WPMD on the Net, where people make a difference. As a parent, you can help you can't help but look at your child and wonder, what does the future hold? You may dream about the possibility of your son or daughter becoming a professional athlete or a renowned heart surgeon. But while you're dreaming, consider this. The odds that your child will be diagnosed with autism is 1 in 68. Knowing the signs of autism and addressing it early can make the world uh, the world of difference for your child and you. To learn the signs, visit AutismSpeaks.org. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Hey, parents of children with asthma, here's the Breathe Easies with another one of your favorite hits. Don't smoke in the house. Don't smoke in the house. Don't smoke around the kids. In the house. Don't smoke in the car. Don't smoke in the house. Don't break my heart. Preventing asthma attacks can be as simple as making your home and car smoke-free zones. For more Breathe Easy tips to help stop asthma attacks, go to noattacks.org. Up next, well, what do you know? The Breathe Easies with another hit song, Vacuum Up the Floor. 
Vacuum up the floor. Vacuum up the floor. Vacuum up the floor. He has more trigger is no more. You gotta vacuum up the furniture and vacuum in the cracks because the dander and the dust can give kids asthma attacks. Simple steps can help your kids breathe easier. Vacuum up the floor to keep your house free of dust, dander, and dust mites. For more Breathe Easy tips to help stop asthma attacks, go to noattacks.org. Brought to you by the EPA and the Ad Council. And welcome back to the Falcon Spotlight, ladies and gentlemen. I am here with my guests from Dynamic Dance Club. Now, I was wondering, um, so what is your role again with uh, your club? I'm the president of the club. And I know that some clubs, they have, uh, they have like a structure. They have a, a constitution in, in states, you know, like how do people run or if there is any uh, pre-qualifications. Uh, what is your, the structure within your club? To become an officer in the club? Mm -hmm. Our requirements to be an officer club is just to, as I believe for the requirements, is to be at least a semester into the club. And you at least have to have a 2.0 GPA and taking about four, three units, three units a semester, at least three units. Okay. And, um, when you first joined the club, uh, I know that sometimes people, when they've never uh, been to a club before, they may be nervous about the fact that they had to give a speech when they're <laughs> running for a position. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about, you know, how you first got involved in clubs. Okay. My first time, actually, I was nervous. I actually just um, finished having surgery. And I finally came back to school and I met these people. My best friend was talking to one of them and they were explaining and I'm like, okay, well that day they were having a bachata workshop. So I'm like, okay, well, let me check it out and see, since I already knew how to dance. So I'm like, okay, let me check it out. And I went to go to the bachata workshop. And ever since then, I liked how it was, how friendly the people were, they make you feel comfortable, and that's what I want to keep on happening with this club. That's why I, I like to enforce people to come, join, have fun, and smile and everything with us, have some laughs and jokes. When did you know that you want to take on responsibility and be more than just a regular member? Um, it first, it was a little iffy for me because I already have a lot on my plate. Um, and my first position was secretary in that setting all that e all the emails and i'm like okay sure why not this can't be too hard just sending emails it was good and then i got moved up to vice press no not vice president i got moved up i forgot to where and the original president he's the founder of the club he was leaving for a semester and he needed someone and I just decided, hey, I'll put my hand up and I'll take over for while you're gone. And it's been about a year and I still enjoy it. So, Did you freak out when you have to give a speech or have you gotten over it? Uh, yeah, I still freak out. <laughs> I, I have to give speeches every once in a while because I'm also in another program um, from outside of school. And I, since I was the captain on that part, I still had to give speeches and I'm still freaking out every time. <laughs> Captain? Yeah. Cap it's the um, law enforcement explorers. Oh. I do that. I'm actually out because I'm turned 21. I just recently turned 21 too. So it was my last time and I resigned, but I was captain from there. I've been in there for five years and yeah, still freaking out about speeches. Maybe. So what's your major? My major is actually mathematics and criminal justice. My uh, minor is criminal justice, and right now I'm in math, doing calculus. It's hard. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> mathematics, I always say this, but math is so challenging that the only equation I can remember is math plus me equals slushy brain. <laughs> um, wow. Um, so how, how did this mixture of interest come about? How did you know that you want to do both math and criminal justice? Um, well, when I was younger, I knew I wanted to do something in law enforcement. It was always something that inspired me. I always seen the activities there, and I just loved how it works, and also helping people too. Uh, but 
as well, I was always, I learned how to do math very late in my life because when I went to middle school, I didn't learn anything in math or any subject at all. And when I went to high school, I couldn't even divide or multiply. It was that bad. But I got one of my high school teachers and she took the time and she taught me and that inspired me more to do, to like math and proceed in it. And from there, out of the whole years for law enforcement, a deputy always, the deputies always tell me, don't just major in criminal justice, also major in something else, just in case that's a fallback. So that's how I got to mathematics, majoring in mathematics and criminal justice. So how do you go about um, the levels of math like here? Like people will sometimes say, oh, like college math is harder or? Um, it's, it's not harder. Um, well, easy to say for a math major. <laughs> but um, what it is is that people, I think people need to take the time to learn it, to take the time to practice it, because you're not gonna get in one shot. This is my third time taking calculus, Cal 1, and I need to get up to Cal 3. So it's this is my third time taking it. So it takes time to practice. You need to have time to understand the math. This, this hearing calculus is already scary enough <laughs> to know that there's <laughs> levels of calculus. You still have to, it's like, yeah. Oh, one semester's enough. <laughs> So, you have to go up to three levels of calculus and then you'll be done? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, three levels of calculus, which is Cal 1, Cal 2, and Cal 3. And I should be done in getting my AA in mathematics. So, and you're, you're going to aim for both AAs? or? Uh, yes, I'm aiming for both. Um, I want to finish my math first and then criminal justice. I already have some classes done. So I'll be, I just need about four more classes for criminal justice, and I should be done with that as well. And I always ask my guests this question, uh, usually, especially when it's a student. I, um, what was your goal for this semester, and what's your goal after Cerritos College? Where do you see yourself afterwards? My goal for this semester, as every student, is to pass your classes. <laughs> That's one big part, pass the finals. And afterwards, I... After Cerritos College, I do see me finishing up to get a BA and continue my education, but also working in the Department of Law Enforcement to have that experience go on more. Now, being that uh, you've had to take some criminal justice, um, do the majors of criminal justice have to be like those cadets that are walking around? or? No, you don't have to be a cadet or campus police to major in criminal justice. That's uh, optional. It's for experience. That's what they have it here for. But you don't have to work on campus police to major in criminal justice. Have you been curious about it? or? Um, I was curious of joining the, thing, uh, the campus police, but I had like other opportunities of jobs because it takes a process to get in. I did... I put in my application about a year ago and still it hasn't, I haven't got a call back yet. <laughs> so I had other opportunities for other jobs. So I've been doing that. Speaking of jobs, I know that, yeah, sometimes some students like uh, books can be like super expensive <laughs> and stuff like that. And people end up having to balance both work and school. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you currently do right now? And like, how do you, how do you manage your time management working and doing school? Well, right now, I'm not working anymore. I finished uh, working. I used to work right here at the bookstore, and I used to work as a teacher's assistant over the summer. That was a um, part-time job as well. So I'm not working this semester because I wanted to focus more on my calculus um, because that really does take time because I'm only taking two major courses, and then the rest I'm just, like, focusing on that. Any time that I have is to the club or the math center. Now, when you have to deal with, um, when you were working with and doing both, um, let's say there was like finals and midterms, how did you cope with that? Oh, it was stressful. <laughs> <laughs> stressful. Uh, going to work, getting, uh, being tired and still having to study. Uh, it was good one part 
that I, I always study before I go to sleep because I feel like it helps me memorize it more. But it was bad too because when you're so tired, you your brain won't like stick to it anymore. <laughs> your brain is dead. But some people could actually keep going. And for me, I just need a little tiny break and then I'll get back into it. But it was stressful when finals and working. And now, um, this semester, is this the only club that you're in? Is um, I Dynamic, yes, it's the only club that I'm mostly in, but I try to help out with other clubs if I can, with the math club, with try, anything I can do uh, to help out any other club, by all means, I can help out with anybody. Now, for Spring Festival, um, I know that there's also a chili event coming up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, tell us about that chili event. The chili event, so pretty much a person brings a recipe and brings a pot of their chili and they will judge it on I believe the spiciness of the chili which one's good which one's spicy and uh, fortunately we don't have no one in the club who can cook chili so we're not in that event <laughs> but we are in the cupcake contest to make cupcakes cool tell <laughs> us about that one the cupcake contest um, what we're planning to do is because one of my friends, she knows how to make these caramel stuffed brownies. They're really good. And I told her, hey, why don't we make it into a cupcake and put frosting on it? And so we're going to probably do that. Cool. Now, I know that uh, from what I heard, there's like so many different categories. It's not just like, you know, the winner, that's it. There's sometimes it's like, I guess... Uh, or at least I think it was for chili unique, like most unique, and like all these other. Yeah, categories. they have different categories for that, of which one's unique, which one's spicy, which one's sweet. So, they have various of like categories that you could fall under from there. <coughs> cool. So for Spring Festival, it's just a chili contest and Mr. Cerritos is is that it or uh, the, the chili contest, Mr. Cerritos the cupcake contest. And also a spring festival that's going to be here. That's going to be with all the booths right here. They're actually doing it an era. Era. That you choose an era and you decorate your booth as that era. So I think we have our booth. We decided to do, I think, a 1915s era. So very old back. We're going old, old school. <laughs> cool. So, are you nervous about finals coming up? Yes. <laughs> yes, very much. I'm nervous about this exam coming up next week, too. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> so um, when you have a, like, when you're struggling with your class, like, what resources do you use uh, to try to figure out your homework and stuff? Um... Well, on the weekend, I always go to Starbucks to do homework because I f find that much quieting. I think everybody likes doing that. But during the week, I go I, since I have a great resource, I go to the learning center for the mathematics downstairs. And I stay there for about four hours just doing math and getting help on whatever problem I need. Excellent. Um, so you had mentioned a while ago about a math club. Um, tell us about it. Um, math club, pretty much. They they offer great tutoring too, as well. I I met a person. I was swimming in water polo during the summer, and um, he was in the math club, and he told me about it, and I went to go see what it is about and they offer a lot of good tutorings there they'll help you out they do a lot of movie nights um, that I know of and also they rent you out a calculator for the rest the whole semester I think for ten dollars or five dollars for so you get a calculator for the whole semester for five dollars so yeah and I noticed that uh I think once you get to a certain math like you need a special type of calculator like yeah they get really expensive the one i have costs about a hundred dollars yeah <laughs> so, uh, that's the ti 84 that that one costs about a hundred or more so and they have different brands too <laughs> so 
That's uh, wow. It's almost a, that's already a book. Yeah, that's like the price of a book. <laughs> and working from the bookstore, from the experience, those books does cost a lot for just a single book. And I know that sometimes people like when they're gonna take a class, like sometimes they'll prefer to like get books. Um, like even online and stuff. Do you mm -hmm. utilize that type of resource? Yes, I do. Uh, that saves me a lot of money. Um, I go on Amazon online, look on the posters around campus, and see which one's the cheapest to find me any book. And if I can't find anything, last option, the bookstore. Yeah, there's a... Mm -hmm. uh, are you... You pretty much finished uh, the rest of your general ed. That's why you're just taking the math now. Yeah, um, I just yeah actually I just finished most of my general ed. I need mostly math, and I believe I just need one more general ed, which is philosophy, and that is it. Yeah, I remember um, when I was looking at the plan A, B, and, and mm -hmm. C and stuff like that. Um, I guess I messed up because. Uh, after English 100, it, mm -hmm. it mentions in there that there's a critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was optional to take English 103. I saw philosophy 103 there, and I'm like, I'm asking around some students, and some mm -hmm. students are like, wow, oh, philosophy is easier, it's easier. So I took that one, and I passed it, mm -hmm. um, and then I let a year go by, and then there, I think I heard a representative from the Cal State saying, oh, we don't take philosophy 103. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> like I just took this class for nothing. Yeah, so now I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going to uh, have to figure out, you know, what's, what's, uh, what's yeah. another one? Yeah, like 103, like, uh, oh, who, who do you take for 103? Who do you <laughs> take? And, you know, a lot of people sometimes they'll like be like, oh, I'm going to go, um, like they won't pick their classes until they, they go on bring my professor and oh, stuff like yeah. that. Oh yeah, everybody <laughs> goes on that one. So do you usually like take the time to research people first before you? Like... I do, I do want to research people uh, because not to be mean or putting down their works like ethics, but there are some professors that don't like put in the motivation into their work. And that doesn't learn, that doesn't uh, motivate the students to learn it or to study or anything and for me I'm a huge person for a person to motivate you to enjoy your work um, to tell me like good things tell me if I'm improving do hands-on with me and everything just to learn the subject and I prefer that way better <laughs> yeah and I noticed sometimes that uh, sometimes when the professor is humorous that you like retain the information yeah. a lot more mm -hmm. um, I remember when I took what political science I think last summer mm -hmm. and it was fun because uh, the professor he would use sometimes have like a family guy scene uh -huh. um, that incorporates actually you know what we're talking about uh, it was, it was and it pretty hilarious so much yeah it's funny yeah. So he's using family guy who would have known <laughs> go to class and we're going to learn government through family, family guy it's, <laughs> it's real fun um, like I, I got an A, and I was like, "Oh man!" Like, you know, to pass political science with A, and you know, the comedy helped. True, it does help. It, I think if you mix in like with humor with studies, it does remember, um, does make you remember it. Because I know with me, when I like listen to music and do my math homework, I could go back and like, what song was I listening to? And then I remember like off of the, what I was studying. So I have a really good playback memory of that. I know, and that's another thing too. Some people, like there could be like different learning styles. Like I know that um, like some people, that they, they just need to be like in a quiet place. Mm -hmm. And my sister, she's like, she has to listen to her music at the mm -hmm. same time. and and. And all of a sudden, uh, my dad would be like, how can you concentrate like that? It's like, that's how I learn. Yeah. I can actually figure it, it out better. It does help most of the time. I can't do it when I'm studying for English and everything. I can't do that with anything else. But with math, it helps me. And I learn it good with the music. I know, that's because math is scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be right back after these public service announcements. 
One of WPMD's most acclaimed series is back. Mike Stark's panoramic look at rock and roll from today back to day one, Rock 50. And now you can hear it, the best of Rock 50, every day, seven days a week at 6 a.m. Pacific. And you'll hear named guests, live performances, exclusive music, and Mike's own insightful comments as he gives you a look at rock music that you've never really heard before. No stone is left unturned, no Beatle either, as you listen to the best of Rock 50 with Mike Stark, seven days a week, Monday through Sunday mornings at 6 Pacific on WPMB on the net, where people make a difference. WPMD can help you save money. Next time you want to go shop online, go to our website first, wpmdonthenet.com. Click on the Amazon.com button. That'll take you to Amazon.com, and you can take advantage of all the great deals you find there. WPMD and Cerritos College Foundation will receive a percentage of what you spend, and it won't cost you an, an anything extra. It's a great way to support the place where people make a difference and to find the best deals on the net. Thanks for being a smart shopper and for helping out the voice of Cerritos College, WPMD. Hey, parents of children with asthma, here's the Breathe Easies with another one of your favorite hits. Don't smoke in the house. Don't smoke in the house. Don't smoke around the kids in the house. Don't smoke in the car. Don't smoke in the house. Don't break my heart. Preventing asthma attacks can be as simple as making your home and car smoke-free zones. For more Breathe Easy tips to help stop asthma attacks, go to noattacks.org. Up next, well, what do you know? The Breathe Easies with another hit song, Vacuum Up the Floor. Vacuum up the floor. Hey. Vacuum up the floor. Yeah. Vacuum up the floor. The asthma drink is no more. You gotta vacuum up the furniture and vacuum in the cracks because the dander and the dust can give kids asthma attacks. Simple steps can help your kids breathe easier. Vacuum up the floor to keep your house free of dust, dander, and dust mites. For more Breathe Easy tips to help stop asthma attacks, go to noattacks.org. Brought to you by the EPA and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Falcon Spotlight, located at WPMD Studios at Cerritos College, Norwalk, California. And I am back here with the president of Dynamic Dance Club. Hello. So this semester, I, I cannot believe how quickly the weeks are just flying by. It's like, wow. Um, what are you most looking forward to? Are, are you going to go to summer school, or are you just going to take summer off? <laughs> um, for summer, I actually do work over the summer. Um, I try to get a job over summer and also go to school to finish some of the classes, any classes that I need to get done that are quick and I could finish them easy over, I believe it's a six week course. And I did that for last summer, it was hectic. Water polo, work, right after water polo, go to work, right after work, go to my next class. So I was here until pretty much eight o'clock at night. <laughs> so I'm ready to do it again for another semester for summer. And what has the experience been like for you? Um, being a daytime student versus a nighttime student? Um, daytime, oh, I'm a daytime person, for sure. Um, I wake up early, uh, five o'clock in the morning, get started with my day, go for a run, be lazy or watch TV in the morning, and then get ready for class around eight o'clock, it starts. And nighttime, that's my nighttime to sleep. <laughs> so. so now, um, so you have your, oh yeah, and for clubs, sometimes officers can serve two semesters, or some clubs have it set to where they're only in office for one semester? Yeah, um, some clubs actually have it a semester. They do each um, position open for, so they reopen the positions every semester. But our club, we actually have it for a, a year, which is two semesters. Um, they're um, they're officer for these two year, uh, two semesters, and if something goes on during one semester and they need a sign like resign, 
that's fine. School always comes first for anything for us. So if it's with school-wise, by all means, or personal life, by all means, it's not mandatory for you to be. But we do have the positions for two semesters for you. But um, we did have some few people set back. Hey, we can't do it no more because we're more focused on school. That's fine. Um, we always replace them and find new people who are dedicated and who wants, who are motivated to bring this club more and everything. We choose, we get them to fill in for the spots for them. Now, um, what's next for you after? Um, are you gonna run uh, for your position again, or? Um, actually, I'm. I think I might run again, but it all depends on what opportunities come for me for uh, the next time. Um, I don't know if I might have an opportunity of getting a good job, full-time benefit or anything. I might take that, and that won't leave me for so much time. Uh, so I'll run again, and I'll see how it goes. And if something comes up, hey, <laughs> we need to take the opportunity what they give us. How about uh, student government? Student government? Oh, gosh, that's a lot of time taking. <laughs> yeah, but I, I actually read online, I believe on Talonmarks, that uh, they, if I understand correctly, they approved uh, the idea of having um, your term in government like put on your transcript. Oh, really? Yeah. So oh, that, I that was actually pretty interesting. Uh, that... I, I just read that. That would be kind of good and everything, and I didn't hear about that actually. Oh, yeah, now I, know. Uh, I just uh, went to the Talon Marks website and mm -hmm. uh, it, it briefly mentioned that. So it, now it'll probably give even uh, <laughs> more students incentive to uh, to join. I mean, uh, they have a Monday student government that meets at two p.m. So mm -hmm. you would have to have two p.m. open, or there's one on Tuesdays. That one's at eleven a.m. Mm -hmm. and then the one on Wednesday, 2 p.m., mm -hmm. and you can only be a member of one branch of government. Okay. Um, some people go for the Wednesday one because there, it's like there's more spots available, and they kind of do like a lot more. Mm -hmm. on, in terms of, uh, well, the Monday one, it's commissioners. So commissioners, each commissioner is usually designated to a certain area of specialty. Like they'll talk to fine arts. One talk. One represents financial aid, stuff like that. Okay. Um, the Tuesday one, that's the court members, and they oversee elections. So only when there's an election, that's when they they have like the most importance, and they have to kind of like walk around and see that like nobody's like cheating or nothing like yeah. that in the election. And then Wednesday, those are the ones that they're there, and they constantly have to see presentations from like groups and stuff that want money. Mm -hmm. So they're they're the money, basically. Mm, they're the okay. So the way that it works for the Senate on Wednesdays is that uh, I believe it's the fall, the beginning of the academic year, uh, these students, in order for them to run for Senate, first they have to walk around and get at least 75 people to sign a petition for them. Uh, usually people get a little bit more because they have to look, run through the IDs at the uh, activities office and see if they were all active IDs mm and then from there that means you qualify to be on the ballot and then they just have the elections and typically there's like I believe 35 seats available in the Senate uh, basically the way that it works is uh, every senator represents 500 students in the population here oh wow and there's a lot of students here yeah <laughs> so uh for every 500 students there's a seat available in the senate mm. so it is definitely uh interesting um and you know it's a good experience and yeah lots of people look forward to it lots of uh especially for the awards banquet lots of people look forward to that incentive the idea that since they have to be participating in stuff, I mean, of course, it's optional. Mm -hmm. Everything that they volunteer is optional. It's optional. But they tend to be the ones, especially, that are, like, in everything. And uh, so they boost their chances also at getting, like, a better award at the awards banquet, mm -hmm. which I believe should be coming up uh, in, like, what, two months? Yeah, in about two months. And um, I think it's before, before or after finals, so it's yeah. around there. Yeah, I think it's actually before finals. 
It's about to come up. Have you been to a, a one before? Yes, I've actually been to one before. Um, I got an award. Um, forgot which award was it, but it was like the very first one. I got a certificate and everything. And I actually went to two, and I both got certificates off of it. So. Definitely. And then, but this semester in particular, this is like the highest positions you've held and stuff, right? Yeah. Maybe there's a chance that you'll go higher this time yeah there hopefully there is a chance I go higher and everything I hopefully I do a lot for this club so let's see if I make it to the higher chance yeah because even uh, um, like right after the certificate the other awards are plaques mm -hmm. so it's pretty cool a uh, good experience and then like maybe who knows maybe eventually they'll even uh, vote to approve the idea of like putting awards onto the transcript yeah um that anything that goes on your transcript helps with anything and that's good that they put uh student government into your uh, the into the transcripts now because i didn't know that that they never did yeah they, they didn't before but now i guess um some of the years were pushing for it and uh they all were in agreement that mm -hmm. they deserve to have it like on there since they work hard in running the school so so now that uh, you know you're you're almost wrapping up with like your um, your major classes and stuff like that, um, what is a uh, what is a good tip you know for people who you know they're they're gonna start they're gonna be now in your place where you were when you first came in here. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like for you when you first came here? Were you lost and stuff? Oh uh, yes, um, I actually was only 16 years old when I came here for my first time. Um, I graduated out of high school and I was 16 and I was like nervous and scared. I was like, oh, I'm in a big campus, open campus, full of a lot of people and older than me, very older than me. So I was nervous at first and I, I took the classes, wrong decision of classes. <laughs> I mixed up English with math with science all, all at once and I heard that was a bad idea. <laughs> So I tried it out and luckily I passed all my classes, but it was stressful for me, but I got the hang of it and I, it takes time to adjust when it's, um, when you're in high school, they, the, the high school teachers are saying, oh, it's okay. If you don't turn it in, you can always turn it in next week. It doesn't happen here. <laughs> you don't turn it in, you don't turn it in and you don't get points for it. So it's a little adjustment. And that people has to get used to their first semester is gonna be hard or confusing and as the semesters go I think it'll be easier from them and yeah what do you feel um, you took out of the club experience what what are the benefits what is the benefits that I took out of the club experience for yeah. myself why should uh, other people like when they start joining clubs and stuff um the experience one is it's a great social it's a great social output for the people where they meet new people from different places and meet how they are and experience anything with them like by friendships or their jokes and everything and it's a great place to meet new people and also they're there with you they're like a family they'll help you if you need help in your studies they'll help you if they know it they'll help you if you need help with anything else, they're there for you. And it's a great way, to, a great place to like have a lean back so you can lean back and someone can catch you. That's what that phrase is called. I don't know. Horrible with catchphrases. <laughs> Do you have uh, any other um, events coming up afterwards? Or? Um, events? Um, no, we just have a bake sale coming up April 7th and our dance showcase on May 5th and we're hoping for that to go very well so and I do have we do have a special performance I don't even know what's this performance he's actually a student on campus he what he is a choreographer his name's Jeffrey he's also in the band and he performs and he actually has a surprise dance I haven't even seen it <laughs> I'm curious of what he do, he's doing or planning so I'm hoping for that one and that should be good. 
sort of the showcase you reached out to other clubs as well too yes i actually reach out to k-pop and i reached out to carver carter club um i want to see if they want to perform and everything and i know k-pop has a showcase too and we're actually thinking of doing it as well um and hopefully they give um give back to us and performing at least one thing in our showcase so and the showcase uh from what time to what time will it be um from five thirty to eight o'clock five thirty eight. and yeah. that's where again at the student center stage and this is uh for tickets or free no or? it's actually a free show it's a free show we do we will be fundraising that day um, so we'll have like pizza on the side or nachos to sell to the audience. But it is a free show. Anybody could come in and watch the show and we'll be performing on the stage. Cool. cool. Now, um, are there a couple of performers that they're going to perform for the first time ever? <laughs> um, yes, actually, for the first time. Um, we actually have... I'm actually thinking of putting one of our pieces because we have I have a jazz class too and we're doing our final already and we're creating this piece and one of our officers she never dances she always helps out she does a good job she helps out she helps out with the cells she's a historian and this is and I'm planning to put that piece our final piece in that dance show so it will be her first time performing it too so I'm Not excited bad. to see that one. <laughs> That's a good, uh, a good way to help the shy people get to uh, yeah. the spotlight. True. And we did have some shy people actually perform, and they did very well. So I'm glad they they go, they go, move out of their comfort zone a little. Because it's not always good to stay in the comfort zone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some people, they won't go ahead and be daring if yeah. they don't try. <laughs> um what would you like um, your legacy as an officer to be? Like, let's say, for example, you choose to not um, be president again. Mm -hmm. um, what was your term? Like, what? <laughs> I don't know how to word the question. Um, yeah, like, what, what do you think was the overall message that you were trying to get around for your term as president this semester? Um, my, my overall message? Um, Tell you the truth, I don't know what would be my overall message, but all I know is that the knowledge I got from learning about this club, I'll just like to pass it on to other people and see if that will motivate them. Because I know knowledge is the best gift you could ever have. And uh, passing it on will be fantastic. Because you just pass it on and they'll say, they'll take it into their thoughts and mind and think about it over and over and that will probably trigger something to motivate them and that's what I want to do so I guess passing on the knowledge of this club to another person cool well, I want to thank you for taking the time to be here on the Falcon Spotlight ladies and gentlemen remember to like my Facebook page my fan page for this show it was called Cerritos College Falcon Spotlight on Facebook you can look it up um, Remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2 p.m. My replays are at 5 p.m. Uh, you can access them from your smartphones. Just look up the TuneIn Radio app and look up WPMD once you have it. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.